Hello, my name is Mark Taylor. I'm a retired lieutenant with the City of Orlando Fire Department. I did uh, 20 years on the job. I was a third generation firefighter. I retired out in 2006. I actually loved doing the job. I uh, loved fighting fire. I had enough of the EMS towards the end. You know, I was getting burned out, you know, seeing all the trauma. Stations down in the ghettos for years. You know, we turned 12,000 calls a year out of that one fire station alone. Cutting, shooting, stabbings. I mean, we ran it all. People don't realize that with the fire service. They think you just, they're playing checkers or I heard that I don't know how many times from people. You know, it's like, no, come spend 24 hours with us and you'll see what we actually do. Every night we didn't even see our bed. There's no way I could have done 25 years at the time. I, I wouldn't be here right now if it was. There was one night in particular at the last station I was at. The first time the thought ever hit me, I just said, you know, what am I doing? You know, I said, I'm tired. I don't want to see any more trauma. And uh, it was at that point I started realizing that uh, it was time to do something at that point. And that was probably, what, 19 years into my career. It was one aspect of my life I was putting away and walking into another one. And little did I know, I thought the last life was gonna be painful. Didn't even compare to what the pain I was fixing to go through for the next probably 10 years. After I retired, I started getting sick. I had anxiety. I mean, I'm talking crushing anxiety and depression, the likes I've never experienced. There were nights where I would wake up, look at the clock, and every minute just seemed like an eternity. I didn't know it at the time, but my adrenals had crashed. I was nauseous all the time. I probably went four or five years of just being nauseous every day. I couldn't eat for four and five days at a time. You know, I couldn't sleep. This was some of the most painful times I'd ever been through. During that time period, uh, about, uh, I think it was actually like a month right after I retired in 2006, I guess it was probably maybe around uh, 12, 30, midnight, something like that, I can't remember the time. My wife came to bed and I woke up. I said, hey, what are you doing coming to bed so late? You know, you just kind of mumble something in the middle of the night. And she said, well, I couldn't sleep. I said, okay. And I rolled over and it was like immediate. Uh, I had gone into this vision, and first time I'd ever had one. And I was in my bedroom, and I could see myself on the floor, on my knees, speaking in tongues. And I was writing in the carpet with this finger. And then all of a sudden, I went from viewing myself to I was myself. And I'm on the carpet, and I'm on my knees, and I'm writing, speaking in tongues, and I was writing in cursive. I looked up in front of me and I saw a huge ominous cloud and I knew it was God. And I looked to my left to the doorway and another cloud came through, came around behind me to my right and stood there to my right. And as I was writing in cursive, light began to come out of this finger and out of this hand. As I was doing this, I cannot describe to you the amount of fear that I felt. I mean, it just, I mean, crushing fear almost. I was in the fetal position when I woke up and I couldn't uh, open my eyes for like what felt like 15 minutes. And when I finally opened my eyes, it was, the clock said 1.33. And so I had rolled over and I told my wife, I said, hey, I think I just had a, a vision. She said, even when I spoke, my voice was different. Because you know, in the Bible it talks about when Moses was in the presence of God, he had to veil his face. And it was kind of like that same theory. And uh, I, she said, it was just one of these experiences that was like life altering. I, didn't, I couldn't figure it out at the time. And at the time, I was going to apostolic church. I had a friend who was a dream interpreter. He said, the cloud that was in front of you was God. And he said, you had a visitation from the Lord. He said, the cloud that came around behind you stood to your right is an angel that's been assigned to you. And he said that the fear that you felt was actually the spirit of the fear of the Lord. He said, and he said, you know, the Bible talks about when we speak in tongues, you know, we speak mysteries. We really don't know what we're speaking at the time. It takes someone to interpret it at times. But the Lord knows what we speak. So he said, whatever it was you were you're gonna do, you were speaking it in, in tongues, basically. And he said, what you were gonna do, he says, you were actually writing it in the carpet. And the reason you wrote it in the carpet, because it'll affect your walk and the walks of others. And he said, the light that was coming out of your finger and out of your hand is the anointing that God's given you to write whatever that he's put in you, basically, at this time. And when he told me that interpretation, it's like the second he said you had a visitation from God, it's like it just went went through me like a lightning bolt. You know, I I knew it was God in a vision, but it's like when you hear the interpretation, it's like it takes on a whole other another, uh, ball game. I mean, just that vision alone um, got me through some of the hardest times of my entire life. Um, it was so dark at times, uh, because if you'll notice, when I had that vision is when I really crashed. It was within four, four months of that vision is when I crashed. And I believe God was taking me through a journey to clean me out of some things that needed to be taken care of. Because, you know, as a first responder, you build these walls, a protection mechanism. Uh, you're, you're running on the worst of the worst on the streets. 
And it was like the Lord was saying, I need those walls to come down in order for you to be able to minister to people. And even though I've seen a lot of bad things and dealt with a lot of bad things, I need you to bring that compassion back. Hi, my name is Melissa Leggett. I am a healing and deliverance minister, and I operate the Rock in the West Coast Prayer Group prayer call for our nation. I started the Rock in the West Coast Prayer Group in June of 2017, when I got very tired of hearing people say that California should break off and fall into the ocean. I decided that was not going to happen because I live here and this is my home and there's got to be something that can be done about it. When I started it, we had two callers and we run about 160 to 200 now and we do it three days a week. I met Mark Taylor in a deliverance ministry. I was, I happened to be the in-house person that took over people that were overflow for our ministry leader. If he didn't have the time and couldn't get people in right away, they would refer people to me. And I got him on the phone and started praying with him in a generational deliverance setting. My first thought of Mark Taylor was that he was a man in need. Much like all the other people that have been referred to me, I took it very seriously. God had put that in my heart to help search the matter out for people, to help them get to the root of some of these ongoing issues. And so I took it very seriously and I did my best to make sure that we were using the Holy Spirit's guidance to try to bring more freedom to Mark's situation. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of pain sometimes to bring a lot of that compassion back. And I can tell you the compassion's back because I, I don't ever want to have to go through that again. I can tell you that. Uh, that's not something I would, they couldn't pay me enough money to go through what I've been through again. Just in that process, you know, it's, one person that put it, I like the way they put it, he said, you know, as a fireman, you're a man's man. And God was taking you from being a man's man to his man. And so uh, it's not an easy process. You know, it's a character building process uh, where God's building your character and your integrity. And nobody wants to go through that process. And that's one of the issues we see in today's life, you know, because it's a painful process. It really is. That was a, a day, I guess, that uh, kind of turned everything around, uh, I think, for more than just me, you know. Uh, I, I was sitting right here, actually, in this room, watching that TV, and I saw Donald Trump. He was in an interview. I didn't know a whole lot about Donald Trump at the time. I just knew he was, I mean, I've got a couple of his books in here. I just knew he was a billionaire who built a huge empire. He was toying with the idea of running. He never announced. He just was toying with it. And as he was sitting there talking, I heard the Lord say, you're hearing the voice of a president. So I went into my office and I sat down, just like the Apostle Paul, and I put pen to paper. And I wrote out what was called the Commander-in-Chief Prophecy, April 28, 2011. A prophecy, I would say, is a written word that is coming through revelation from the Holy Spirit and it is being delivered to the people. Sometimes it is a warning, sometimes it is a future event that might be happening, um, but the Lord will reveal it to the prophets first and they take it to the people. So before I read the prophecies, uh, I want everyone to, to know that even my preconceived ideas of how something's gonna come to pass is not necessarily how it's gonna happen. So I might give my opinion on some things in these prophecies, but that doesn't necessarily mean that is the prophecy. So, uh, because and I'll, I'll go through some examples once we start talking about this first prophecy. So, uh, Commander-in-Chief, uh, April 28th, 2011, and it says, The Spirit of God says, I have chosen this man, Donald Trump, for such a time as this. For as Benjamin Netanyahu is to Israel, so shall this man be to the United States of America. For I will use this man to bring honor, respect, and restoration to America. America will be respected once again as the most powerful and prosperous nation on earth other than Israel. The dollar will be the strongest it has ever been in history of the United States and will once again be the currency by which all others are judged. The Spirit of God says, the enemy will quake and shake and fear this man I have anointed. They will even quake and shake when he announces he is running for president. It would be like the shot heard across the world. The enemy will say, what shall we do now? This man knows all our tricks and schemes. 
We have been robbing America for decades. What shall we do to stop this? The Spirit says, Ha, no one shall stop this that I have started. For the enemy has stolen from America for decades, and it stops now. For I will use this man to reap the harvest that the United States has sown for and plunder from the enemy what he has stolen and return it sevenfold back to the United States. The enemy will say, Israel, Israel, what about Israel? For Israel will be protected by America once again. The Spirit says, Yes, America will once again stand hand in hand with Israel, and the two shall be as one. For the ties between Israel and America will be stronger than ever, and Israel will flourish like never before. The Spirit of God says, I will protect America and Israel, for this next president will be a man of his word. When he speaks, the world will listen and know that there is something greater in him than all the others before him. This man's word is his bond, and the world and America will know this, and the enemy will fear this, for this man will be fearless. The Spirit says, when the financial harvest begins, so shall it parallel in the spiritual for America. The Spirit of God says, in this next election, they will spend billions to keep this president in. It will be like flushing their money down the toilet. Let them waste their money, for it comes from and is being used by evil forces at work. But they will not succeed, for this next election will be a clean sweep for the man I have chosen. They will say things about this man, the enemy, but it will not affect him. And they shall say it rolls off of him like the duck. For as the feathers of a duck protect it, so shall my feathers protect this next president. Even mainstream news media will be captivated by this man and the abilities that I have gifted him with. They will even begin to agree with him, says the Spirit of God. There's a lot in this prophecy that's already come to pass, and there's a lot that's, there's still a couple of things that have to come to pass, and the mainstream media is one of them as far as them agreeing with him. And we have seen a couple of headlines coming out that's kind of pointing in that direction. But I think really when you see the media begin to agree with him is when they clean the media out, when some of these indictments come down, when the arrests happen, that's when you're going to see the media uh, begin to agree with him. When the prophecy talks about the enemy has stolen from America for decades, you know, it's money, it's jobs, the economy, they've allowed drugs into here, they've allowed illegal immigration in here. Uh, that's stealing uh, the things that God's going to replace. When he announced he was running, that was like the shot heard, heard around the world, which was announced that America's back, America's breaking free. I think uh, Donald Trump was chosen for many reasons, partly because of his bloodline, you know, where he comes from. Uh, there could be something in his bloodline that, you know, God's honoring or he's a part of. I think also it's uh, his knowledge of things, his experience, uh, you know, with all this information coming out, well, who he knew and, you know, with JFK Jr. being good friends. Uh, you know, uh, I think there's going to be some serious justice to pay uh, for those who took out Junior's dad and those who supposedly took out Junior. So there's going to be some serious justice coming. This part of the prophecy where it talks about this next election, they will spend billions to keep this president in. A lot of people thought that meant Obama's third term, and it really did in a way. But see, here we go again. We've got to be careful with the prophetic where you have your own preconceived ideas. You have this movie you're rehearsing in your head of how this is supposed to play out. And I got attacked a lot for that because they said, well, it's not, you don't know your constitution. He can't serve a third term. But a lot of people also thought that it could have been Hillary Clinton because they were saying, all the pundits were saying at the time that it could be, when she gets in, it would be Obama's third term. And in fact, that was none of the above. Now we're seeing his third term play out where he's got a headquarters two miles down from the White House. He's got a shadow government. They're trying to undermine everything that the president's doing. My reaction when I first heard Mark mentioned the Donald Trump prophecy was numbness in the face. <laughs> my right side of my face went completely numb. My spirit was like leaping inside. Donald Trump is the kind of person that stayed in the background. He didn't get into, involved in politics or spiritual things, but God saw his heart and knew that he would stand for righteousness. He knew that he could tell what was right happening in the country and what was wrong. And he knew that his heart was to do something about it. And God raised him up and put him in a position to be able to do it. And he was prepared for it for many years. It wasn't just something that got dumped into his lap. Most of the time when you're getting called like that, you don't realize you're being called when you're in your 20s or 30s. But God is preparing you. And Donald Trump has walked through very big things that have prepared him for the moment that he's in right now. I think President Trump is a trumpet for discipline, and he's not going to allow it in our nation anymore. He's coming in and saying enough is enough. In a lot of areas, he's cutting all that off. I thought he was going to announce in 2012, and a lot of people will say, well, you're a false prophet or your false prophecy because you thought it was going to be, well, because of I thought. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, just because I thought doesn't mean I was right, you know what I mean? Uh, or that's wrong. 
It just, I thought it was for 2012. So I, when he didn't announce, I set it aside. And then of course you got 2015 starts coming up and Donald Trump's toying with the idea of running again. You know, people were, I was listening to the mainstream media, which I shouldn't have done. They were blowing it off like, oh, he's just doing this as another gag or, you know, this, you know, for show or whatever it is, you know. And so I started paying attention a little bit more because I just, I just felt something inside, right? The day that President Trump announced he was going to be running for office was June 16th. I heard the Lord say, I want to go back and research that day. Well, I kept researching. I couldn't find anything. And then finally, I, 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 find, I found it. It was the day that they actually made the decision to drop the atomic bomb. Now, that's the day he made the decision to run. If that's not a shot heard around the world, I don't know what is. I mean, the same day they make the decision to drop the atomic bomb, this is an atomic bomb coming in the spirit right here as far as Donald Trump is concerned. Because I'm telling you, when he announced he was running, that was literally an atomic bomb in the spiritual realm because the cabal, uh, Illuminati, whatever you want to call them, uh, that put them on notice, your days are numbered at that point. And I'm thinking, Lord, is this real? <laughs> you know, you kind of question the little things there. It's like, because this is actually the, the first written prophecy that I had really sat down and penned out. And it's like, okay, this is on a national scale. This is, this is not playing around here. This is like for real. And it was just, it was very, it was very humbling. I mean, I didn't really know what to think at the time. I was excited, but didn't know what to think at the time either. And it was like, you know, Lord, what happened? Did I, did I miss this? You know, and in 2012, he said, Mark, my people weren't ready. He said, they need another four years of Obama in order to get ready to say enough is enough and to rise up and put a stop to this. This is an incredible movement. The world is talking about it. The world is talking about it. And by the way, if you haven't been looking at what's been happening at the polls over the last three or four days, I think you should start. Together, we can save American lives, American jobs, and American futures. November 8th, we have to get everybody to go out and vote. October 7th, 2015, Lord had me write a prophetic word called America, America. The Spirit of God says, America, America, oh how I love thee. America, America, oh how I have chosen thee. For as England was to the D-Day invasion, so shall America be for my end time harvest. For England was the headquarters, the hub from which the D-Day assault was launched. So shall it be for my America for the end time harvest. For as England had men, women, equipment, food, money, weapons, and supplies of all kinds, which poured in from all over the world, so shall these things pour into my chosen America. America, I have chosen you as the launching platform for the worldwide assault on the spiritually oppressed peoples of the earth. People will say, how are we chosen? It's as if America is frozen. Am I not the God of the universe and all of creation? I have heard the cries of my people that have sought my face, and I will heal their nation. People will ask, how will I do this? I shall do this in two parts. First, the Spirit of God says, Army of God, out of the darkness, I command you to arise and take your place. For I have given you extra time, mercy, and grace. Go, 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 do not slow down. Begin to take and hold your ground, for there is no more time to waste. America will once again be the great light. The enemy will say, Oh, the light, the light, it shines so bright. There is nothing else left to do but take flight. And indeed they will. The sign will be a mass exodus in the natural as the spiritual flee. Second, the Spirit of God says, the gatekeeper, the gatekeeper, the President of the United States is the spiritual gatekeeper. I have chosen this man, Donald Trump, and anointed him as president for such a time as this. Can you not see this? For even in his name, Donald, meaning world leader, spiritual connotation is faithful. Trump, meaning to get the better of, or outrank, or defeat someone, or something, often in a highly public way. This man I have chosen will be a faithful world leader, and together with my army will defeat all of America's enemies, in the spiritual and in the natural. You will see it manifest before your eyes. I will use this man to shut gates, doors, and portals that this past president has opened. He will open gates, doors, and portals this past president has shut. My army shall not be silenced. They will begin to see he is the one I have chosen. They will begin to rally around him and keep him covered in spiritual support. And as you gain ground, they will say America is not frozen. The seeds, the seeds. Why is no one asking about the seeds? What about all the seeds America has sown since her birth? America has never received her harvest, for I will use President Trump and my army to bring back to America all that she has sown. This will be used for my harvest. 
America will prosper like never before in our history as a nation. All the financial seeds you have sown around the world, food, clothing, 90% of my gospel that has gone throughout the earth has come from my chosen America. Her blood has been spilled on foreign soil to free the oppressed so that my gospel could go forward. America, your harvest is here. It shall parallel with your spiritual harvest in the natural, so do not fear. The Spirit of God says the border, the border is a 2,000 mile gate that's flowing across with demonic hate. I will use my presence to shut this gate and seal it shut. It must be shut. Then I will use him and my army to root out evil structures that are still there to the point that the government will begin to call on my army. They will prophetically locate these structures so they will be dismantled before any evil can take place. OPEC, OPEC, take a hike, for I am tired of your evil energy spikes. When my president takes office, you will shake and quake. You will say America no longer needs us, and that is true, or she will be energy independent from my red, white, and blue. For a sign will be given when prices go low, for a gallon of gas will be one dollar and below. The Spirit of God says, the Supreme Court shall lose three, and my president shall pick new ones directly from my tree. Are you still not convinced that he's my anointed and that he's the one I have appointed? Why can no one figure it out? The news media, the people, and the so-called wise. Why, when he's attacked, do his poll numbers rise? Those who attack him, their numbers go low, and even to the point of a big fat zero. It's simple to see that this man I have appointed from in my word is your answer. I said, do not touch my anointed, especially my prophets. If you are still not convinced about what my word says, another sign will be given, and it will be a warning to all, especially those who will not listen. The Spirit of God says, the sign will be, El Chapo, El Chapo, your evil reign has come to an end. Who do you think you are attacking my anointed? Turn yourself in and repent, and I will spare you. If you do not, you and those that follow you will surely die a very public death for the entire world to see. For no one touches my anointed. I am the Lord, an all-seeing and all-knowing God. I will be the one to disclose your location, the den, the den that you and your vipers hide in. For time is short, and the spirit of death is at your door, and the world will see your dead body in the red shirt you wore. The thoughts, my thoughts on America, America, is that this was written before the president got in office, uh, you know, October 7th, 2015. And the Lord's telling us right here what's going to take place. So a lot of this is coming to pass. The army of God is the remnant, someone who's not in the system, so to speak, um, because the system has oppressed people for so long. It's all about control. It's all about manipulating people. It's not having people think for themselves. Uh, it's stealing the free will of man, so to speak. Uh, the remnant are those who are not actually involved in that. It's, it's the army of God that God's assembling outside of the system. Uh, those are the ones that are taking ground for the kingdom of God, uh, and they're holding it at all costs right now. Again, the Lord's talking about how a sevenfold harvest coming back. America's history has been one where we've always been first on the scene, so to speak. And so we're there to rescue other countries. We have sowed these seeds all over the world, it's food, shelter, clothing. We've come to the rescue of these countries that have been spiritually oppressed. How important America is to the rest of the world, you know, that old saying, when America sneezes, everybody catches cold. Uh, America's been chosen as the, the end time hub by which the end time harvest will be launched. You know, we've been sowing and sowing and sowing. 90% of the gospel has gone throughout the earth and has come from America. We've never received a harvest. So under the president, you know, we will have a sevenfold return on everything that America has sown. Everything that this man has promised, he's delivered on and more. And the cleanup that's taking place. The cleanup's got to happen too. Because you can't have a harvest without the evil, if you will, in this country or globally that's, that's not been cleaned up. All over the world right now there's protests happening. And anywhere you see these protests, look out because that's an open door for the gospel to come in. And that's what the elite do not want right there. The 2,000 mile border, you know, the Lord's shutting the border. There's more to the border than just people. And people have to understand that there is a very bad spiritual element that wants in this country that you're not just holding people back, you're holding the spiritual entities out. And so when you're talking about these spiritual entities, you're talking about entities that want to come in here, they want to literally rape, pillage, kill. It's bad spirits that you're allowing in here that God is trying to, to clean out right now, that we don't need those spiritual elements in here. The part in here was talking about OPEC, and then the gallon of gas will go to a dollar a gallon or below. It was really astounding because it was by, about a year ago, I think it was, uh, I can't remember what it was, but the president was actually calling for $1 a gallon gas. And when I, when I heard that, I was just, my mouth just hit the floor. You know, again, you see some of this stuff begin to come to pass like that, something huge like that, because that's huge. Uh, you know, it just, it's very humbling to see that come to pass. So at some point, we're probably gonna end up with $1 a gallon gas or below.
El Chapo, this was written in uh, October 7, 2015, America, America. He's now in prison at this point, and he was locked up. He was actually naming names of politicians. Uh, it was in the headlines of those that he paid off for human trafficking, sex trafficking, weapons, drugs, all these things. Uh, he was in the same facility that Epstein was. Uh, they successfully moved him to Colorado, uh, maximum security out there. So uh, he's still alive, and, uh, but he's, he's, he's in prison. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated us, it's about us, on our victory. Ours was not a campaign, but rather an incredible and great movement made up of millions of hardworking men and women who love their country and want a better, brighter future for themselves and for their family. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. We will also finally take care of our great veterans. We've been so loyal, and I've gotten to know so many. The time I've spent with them during this campaign has been among my greatest honors. Our veterans are incredible people. It was an amazing evening. It's been an amazing two-year period. And I love this country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Me and my wife had stayed up all night waiting for him to announce if he had won it. And when they did like 3 o'clock in the morning, we were just both in tears. I think it was, it was just very somber, but, you know, humbling at the same time for both of us. And just realizing that, hey, we, we've got a shot now. You know, we're not going to lose our country now. I just knew he was a very powerful businessman. Uh, he built this multi-billion dollar empire, you know, real estate, uh, all kinds of stuff. I knew he was very smart. Uh, we're finding out today just how smart he really is. Uh, I mean, he's off the chart smart. He has got such a high level of discernment. I, he's the type of guy to me uh, that could probably walk into a board meeting of 30 people he's never seen before. And he could probably, as he walks in, he could probably look at each person and go, yes, yes, no, no, as to who he could trust and who he can't. Uh, his discernment is on a level that's just incredible. I think he's got a lot of prophetic gifts. He may know that, I don't know. I've never spoken to the president, but I think he's a prophet of sorts, if you will. People may attack me for that, but there's nothing I can do. I, I, I think, I've been asked that before, do I think Donald Trump's a prophet? I said, yeah, I do. Uh, he's always 10 steps ahead of people, which people can't quite figure that out. As a chess player, that he is, he's 10 moves ahead of everybody. Okay, so the next prophecy is called, Do Not Be Deceived, Get in the Fight, and that was written uh, October 13th, 2015. And it says, The Spirit of God says, The Clintons, the Clintons, your time has come to an end, for you both are being omitted for the crimes you have committed. Hillary's is no great secret, and they will be her downfall, but bills will be exposed, one after the other, and it will be a windfall. For this time you will not escape the prosecution and restitution for the rape and prostitution. You thought no one saw, but I the Lord see it all, and now this will be your downfall. The Spirit of God says, Beware, beware, the enemy roams about seeking whom he can devour, and this sitting president is doing just that in this hour. He is full of lies and deceit and is very hateful. He spreads division, corruption with every mouthful. Beware when he says, Look over here what the right hand is doing to divert your attention from what the left hand is doing, his intention. This is a setup from the president and his minions from the hate, the division, and Hillary Clinton. Why can no one see this? For the signs are clear to see that this president and his minions will try for three. A sign will be when he will try and take the gun so the people can't rise up and stop him when he tries to run. He will not succeed, for this is the people's right. But make no mistake, it will be a fight. The Spirit of God says, My army, my army, rise up and take to the fight, and I will stop this that has already taken flight. For this war is over America and should not be taken lightly. You will have to fight, but America will shine brightly. Take the fight to the enemy, and you will be victorious for all to see, and America will be loved once again, even by some that used to be her enemies. My army continue to war, pray, and fight with a shout, and I will remove this president that has become a louse. 
Then you will see the man I have chosen, Donald Trump, when he takes back my White House. Some of the things I want to point out in here is that uh, this was written in 2015 while Obama was still in office. So at the time, uh, the Clintons were just getting away with everything at that point. And we all know their, their reign's coming to an end already. We're already seeing it. Hillary Clinton's, you know, is like Benghazi, the Clinton Foundation, the human trafficking, uh, Epstein, Epstein Island. I mean, both of them were Epstein Island. Uh, so there's going to be a lot coming out on these guys. It's, I mean, it's a laundry list. I mean, the, de the width, the depth, of this thing just for the Clintons alone is huge. I mean, it's global. That spider web goes global. In here where it says, uh, a sign will be he will try to take the gun so the people can't rise up. And it was right before he got out of office that we had one of those, a mass shooting, a false flag. And there it was, they were trying to go after the guns because just in case he lost, they wanted to try to capture the guns. One last effort, ditch effort to try to take those guns. And that was a sign that was given right there. The Second Amendment is very important because, you know, uh, right after World War II, they interviewed a Japanese uh, soldier, a very high ranking officer actually. And they asked, why did you never invade America? And he said, it's because we knew the population was armed. I mean, we've got how many tens of millions of gun owners in this country so you're looking at probably the largest army on, on the planet right here in, in America. And that's why they're after our guns so much. Uh, you know, every time they have a false flag, they want to use that, uh, our school shooting, they want to use that as an excuse to take our Second Amendment rights. And it had nothing to do with the Second Amendment. You know, if I laid uh, a modern sporting rifle down here, fully loaded with one in the chamber right here between us, uh, would that kill anybody? No, it's not the weapon that kills someone. It's the heart of man that kills someone. It takes someone to pick that weapon up pull the trigger, point at someone and pull the trigger. It's the heart of man that kills someone. It's not the weapon. The military tribunals, the Lord started speaking to me about military tribunals about a month before Donald Trump was elected in 2016. He said that these military tribunals will make uh, Nuremberg like a cakewalk. And the Nuremberg trials, of course, being the Nazi war criminals after World War II were huge, you know. So it's going to make that look small in comparison to what's coming because the length, the width, the depth, and the breadth of this thing is like no one can ever imagine. You know, it, it'll probably be those who committed treason, you know, crimes against humanity, uh, the child trafficking, all of this, all of these things. So I'm sure there are parameters set for who actually has military tribunal and who's still in a civilian court of law. Lindsey Graham and Justice Kavanaugh during his hearings that line of question, I'm paraphrasing again here, where he said that, you know, if, if a civilian is tried with treason, can they be charged in a military court of law? And he says, absolutely, yes. And that put the fear of God in a lot of people right there uh, because they know it's coming. Now, whether they perp walk these guys on national television, I don't know. If they do, it's not time to panic because uh, they know that the civil unrest is, is coming. They're preparing for it. God is using Donald Trump. He's using many people around Donald Trump to help set this earth free from pedophilia, the satanic rituals, Human trafficking, child trafficking, we're seeing it every day in the headlines right now of how they're cleaning this mess up and how many of the elites, Hollywood, rock stars, country stars, even church leaders are involved in this mess. And it's all going to come out. And I said, they're going to have to be careful how they deal with this because it could, it could take down literal parts of government. It's so corrupt. And people look at me and they go, what oh, are you nuts? You know, and I, I've said Obama's going to go to prison. Hillary's going to, and Bill Clinton are going to go to prison. They're all going to go to prison. Uh, all this stuff's going to get cleaned up, but people just, I think for the most part, people have a hard time having faith, thinking that it's actually going to happen because we've been so many years been corrupt. All they've ever seen is the corruption, like the elections, I'll give you an example, where uh, constantly, you know, we're seeing constantly being stolen. Oh, it's never going to get cleaned up. It's going to get cleaned up. They're going to have to clean it up for 2020. So all of these things are happening, but the mainstream media is not reporting on it because they're blacking it out. And most people get their information 
from the news media. So this is why I tell people, you need to go to the president's Twitter feed or go to his Facebook page. You're getting the truth straight from the source right there. I think we've had such a truth deficit, if you will, in this country, but globally, and they're tired of being lied to. They're tired of the same old lies being spewed out by these politicians day after day, year after year, decade after decade. And here comes someone who's a truth seeker and truth speaker, which is what God's looking for. I think he's just, people see that. And they're, that's what they're attracted to is the truth, period. You know, he represents the people, everything that people want, not what government wants. Our citizens will prosper. So the next prophecy is called Do Not Fear America, and it was written February 24th, 2016. And it says, The Spirit of God says, Why do I sense fear in my people about the future of America? Have I not said that I have heard your cries and will heal your land? Stand firm, do not falter, put on the full armor of God, rake the enemy over the coals, for the end time battle is on for my one billion souls. The Spirit of God says, Do not fear that my servant Justice Scalia has been taken, for some are crying out, Why have I forsaken? For I will show myself strong to prove that the so-called wise are wrong. For some will say that this is a miracle, for I am just getting started. This is not even close to the pinnacle, for what I am going to do with my America. For do not my people have eyes to see and ears to hear the two signs I gave when they carried my servant's body up the steps of the courthouse where to rest he was laid? Read the signs. Read the signs that were for all to see and understand the words in this prophecy. The Spirit of God says five, that's right, five Supreme Court justices will be appointed by my new president, my anointed. I will choose five through my anointed to keep those alive. I will stack the court with those that I choose to send a clear message to the enemy that you lose. This is a miracle that I will perform so that my court will be reformed. The Spirit of God says the cries, the cries that I have heard from the womb, have reached my eyes and ears like a sonic boom. The five I appoint and the reform that shall take place, the great I am shall take on this case. For it is my will and my way for all those that have prayed that my court shall overturn Roe versus Wade. The Spirit of God says, America, get ready, for I am choosing from the top of the cream, for I am putting together America's dream team from the president and his administration to judges and Congress to ease America's frustrations. The Spirit of God says, rise up my army and get in the fight, for this is the generation that's taking flight. This is the generation of warriors that those of old wanted to see and the enemy will have no choice but to flee. Rise up, stomp the enemy's head with bliss, send the enemy back to hell and into the abyss. This is the generation of warriors that all of hell has feared to face and see, but I am and all of heaven is cheering you on with glee, your Supreme Commander, God. In this prophecy, there's a lot in this prophecy. And at the time it was written, Scalia had just died. Justice Scalia had just died. And America was in a literal panic because Obama still had like eight months, nine months to go before, uh, to the election. So they were in full-blown panic mode thinking this guy's going to get another Supreme Court pick. There was two signs given at that funeral. As they were, it was a very solemn moment. It was very quiet uh, watching it on, on the media. And as they were bringing his body out of the hearse and they started walking up the steps, there was a loud siren in the background. And as they were walking up the steps, it began to dissipate. And then when they got to the top of the steps, you hear a loud booming train horn in the background. And the Lord said, no, this president's not gonna get this pick. This is, help is on the way, the siren, for this has been reserved for my anointed, the Trump train. That's what the Lord was saying in all of this. The part in here in the Supreme Court, you know, God can change his mind, it's biblical. Many examples of how the Lord will change his mind. But in this particular case, I believe what happens is the Lord gives people a grace time for repentance. And I think there was two more judges on that court that I believe he was giving time to repent. They didn't do it. You know, now it's gonna be the five. We we're talking about how there was two we believe that didn't repent for whatever was going, the scandal that's coming. There's a scandal coming. And uh, we may never know the scandal. It may just be that they quietly exit because, you know, if you really want to start a war in this country, you start dealing with the Supreme Court because, I mean, it could start one quick. So God's going to reform the court with five judges, 
he's going to take on the case of Roe versus Wade. Roe versus Wade will be overturned. It's important that we take back, you know, the state governments, uh, the, the governorships, and the, turn these things red because when Roe versus Wade gets overturned on a federal level, it will get kicked back to the states. And at that point, I believe that's where the blessings or the judgment will begin to come down on those states, depending on which way they go. It will also depend on um, the voter fraud, electoral fraud, which I believe is going to get handled. Uh, because again, how do you hold a state accountable when it's been stolen the, the entire time, when the people have been voting out all the time? You know, a prime example was, was California. I was this close to prophesying California was going to go red with Trump uh, coming in. And I believe it actually did. And again, it was stolen. And we're seeing how this rogue leadership out in California are stealing and manipulating the elections because they know that if, they, if we control California, it's over for those guys. Goodbye. The dream team that the prophecy talks about that God is putting it together with, through Trump and his administration there's been a lot of turnover, but there's been a reason for it. It's because he's dealing with the swamp. He's draining the swamp. He knows who's who. He's got military intelligence on his side. He's got the military on his side. And this is a military operation. And you're, so you're looking at allowing some of these people, if you will, some of these bad actors, bad players, uh, to be in these positions for a reason because they're, they're, they're following these people. They're, they're, getting, they're weeding out the spider web. They're seeing just how deep the spider web goes, and they're dealing with it on a daily basis. So this is why there's been a continual turnover in his administration a lot of times. But what I want to encourage people to do is that there's going to be a lot of job openings in Washington. There's going to be a lot of job openings at your local, state, federal levels. If you're in the army of God and you are called to one of these positions, a judge, senator, mayor, whatever, you need to get ready to take your rightful place because God's going to begin to use and replace these people with his righteous people. I believe that God is looking for a righteous heart. He's looking at the heart condition of a person. He's not looking for their perfection. He's not looking for how beautiful you speak or what you do as far as being successful. He's looking for the righteous heart right now. I believe he is blessing those people. I believe there's things coming for the righteous people on the planet that we're going to be taking over some of these leadership positions. There's going to be things coming down the road. He's looking on your heart. And we might be judging each other, but he's looking at your heart. And we need to make sure our heart motivation for everything that we're doing is correct. You know, if someone is out there and they're a politician or they're a leader, it doesn't matter if they're a church leader, whoever it is. I mean, you just may be a leader of a company somewhere and you're corrupt. The best wisdom I can give that person right now is to repent because you will be exposed, you will be held accountable because the time of getting away with this stuff, it's over, completely over. Okay, so the next one is called Operation Let My People Go, and that was July 8th, 2016. And it says, the Spirit of God says, when Donald Trump is elected, a sign will be given. The earth shall quake because of who I have selected. It's a shift, a shift in the power structure that is taking place, and another sign will be given when it falls without grace. A lightning strike and a great wind shall topple the so-called great monument, and they will not be able to mend. It will be a sign that the Luciferian reign and ungodly powers are coming to an end. I have had it with time and truth that bends. When it topples and it shatters, the capstone the builders accepted will be exposed for all to see and the one they rejected who is me. For these ungodly powers, I the Lord God will expose. From the Illuminati to the Cabal, they are beginning to decompose. For those that speak of myths of wrath to come are creating fanaticism, and they will go down to the abyss with a cataclysm. The Spirit of God says the timeline, the counterfeit timeline that they have used, you shall see it and how it has been abused. For the counterfeit timeline that they have used to lead my people astray will be exposed and seen because my remnant people have prayed. You people who speak with time and truth that bend, thinking you have encircled my body and sealed them in, hoping it's now their end. For you are saying they are no longer a threat for they accepted a truth that bends. Woe to you for you forgot about my remnant and that's my surprise and now it's your end and it shall be your demise. For the counterfeit spiritual compass that is pulling and magnetizing my people off course, as it be, will be turned back by my true army and pointed true north and back to me. The Spirit of God says, Woe to those that have tried to enslave my people, for now I will topple your so-called steeple. It has stood for so long, that beast of old called Babylon, for this new world order that seeks to destroy, forgot about my true army that's being deployed. My army rise up with a shout, for this evil reign is being exposed with a clout. My army, my army, rise up and take on this beast, and I, the Lord God, will take him down to the least. For this beast is roaring, trying to intimidate through assassinations, division, and hate. Rise up, it's time to battle against the beast with extreme prejudice, and you will terminate. Your Supreme Commander, God.
in this prophecy, uh, it says a sign will be given, the earth shall quake of who I have selected. And he's talking about Donald Trump here. Um, four days after Donald Trump was elected, there was an earthquake in Christ Church, New Zealand. And there was, that was the sign that was given. It was decimated. There was a reason why, because the Lord was saying that there's a shaking coming to Christ's church. At the time, they were waiting on two waves from a tsunami coming in, and I believe those were prophetic. One was for, uh, you're going to see the doors to churches close, or a mass exodus, if you will, from people, because they're just tired of the system, they're tired of what goes on in these churches. And then the second wave was going to be the financial collapse of the church system, basically. And so uh, that was a sign that was given four days after Donald Trump came in. People have asked, the great monument, a lightning strike and a great wind shall topple the great monument. It's the Washington Monument. Right around the Trump prophecy was written, it was damaged in an earthquake. And they closed it until they got it repaired. Uh, so uh, there was, there's a lot going on with that monument and what it represents, so people can do some research on that monument, what it actually, what it actually means. The timeline, the counterfeit timeline God addresses in the second paragraph here. When Donald Trump announced he was running, that was also God saying, I have denied the enemy's timeline. The enemy's timeline was around 2021, 2022, where they were going to have America captured. They were going to have everything under New World Order. Um, you know, we had World War I. They rose up. You know, we were going to have uh, uh, New World Order then. They tried then. We beat them back. World War II came around. Same thing. We beat them back. This is no different. Except for this time, the difference is going to be is that they're not coming back. I don't believe they're coming back. I think they're going to get decimated. Uh, you know, it's almost like the Democrat Party you're seeing being decimated right now. You're not going to see a Democrat in the White House for a long, long time, if ever again. Even as a prophetic voice, when you're writing stuff from the Lord, you don't realize the depth of what you're writing and what you're saying sometimes until it begins to come to pass. And you're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize the depth of that. Uh, you know, Q just released Project Looking Glass. And when you start looking at the Project Looking Glass at how they were literally going forward in time, seeing what was coming, it was like bending time, like the Lord was talking about here. So, I, th I th and they were seeing what their timeline would be and how it would come to pass. And so, this is what I believe was being addressed right here. Now that I see that, because uh, I wasn't quite sure how that was going to come to pass. You know, again, I try not to have any preconceived ideas of how this is going to work out. And now, when you look at Project Looking Glass and how they were literally going into the future, coming back and projecting how they were going to get there using strategy and tactics. And it was just like, wow, now I see how they were literally trying to bend time here and bring in their timeline of 2021, 2022. So the next one is called Full Circle. And it was October 19th, 2016. And it says, the Spirit of God says, Russia. That's right, Russia. I will use Russia, the United States of America, and her allies to take on the fourth right called ISIS. For it has come full circle again. That's right, again. The New World Order is trying to rise and take its place, just like they did in World War II, using the Nazis. They will try again using ISIS, for this plague is spreading, but not for long, for they will be wiped out for their wrongs. For just as in World War II, America and her allies came in from the west, and Russia from the east, so shall it be again to slay this so-called beast, and it will be brought down to the least. Some will say, why would I use Russia? Am I not the god of the cosmos? I will use anyone and any nation I choose, whether some like it or not. I will not be put in a box. The Spirit of God says, the ties that were severed between America and Russia will begin to mend, and they will take on this so-called Goliath, and with one stone shall slay it, and all those that are behind it. For it is not just ISIS they will fight, but the elite, the globalist, and the Illuminati, who will be exposed by my light. For they are an enemy to the world and my agenda. They shall fall with a mighty blow, so that my gospel will begin to flow. For they wear their flag as if it were a prayer shawl, so they will be taken down with my shock and all. For freedom and liberty will begin to ring, and the people will begin to sing as healing and light come from my wings. My people rejoice and shout, for my gospel is coming, and it will go through all the earth, and all the nations will know this is why my America was birthed. On this particular prophecy, the Lord uh, is, you know, the mainstream media has made Russia out to be the enemy, and Russia was not the enemy all along, we're, and we're finding that out now. And, you know, again, this was written a month before uh, the president came into office. And so uh, I had said on a national interview that uh, China was actually the enemy. It wasn't Russia. And that, you know, we were going to partner with Russia, that these ties would be healed. And so this part of that prophecy is, is, is really coming to pass. The other thing that is happening between America and Russia is that, you know, people make Putin out to be the bad guy. He hates the globalist. He hates the elite. I believe that there is a plan going on between Trump and Putin to take these guys down. And so right here it is where the Lord was telling us that this was coming. I think what they were doing with Russia was projection. Don't look in the right hand, 
is what's going on in the left hand over here. So that, I think that's what that was going on with Russia. They just don't want anybody thinking that Russia is good because they want to protect their interests. From when this was written till now, ISIS has been totally wiped out at this point. The head leader of ISIS, Baghdadi, has been terminated and the guy who was supposed to take his place. Regarding the one stone that's gonna to take to slay it, I think the Lord's just pointing out that it's just gonna be simple. There's gonna be nothing to it. And we've seen that under Donald Trump. I mean, it was nothing. He went in there and just wiped these guys out, which is, you know, once you release your military to allow them to do their job, it's not gonna take long. This next prophecy is the evil crew of 32. And it was January 16, 2018. The Spirit of God says, Who do you think you are, you who call yourselves Christians, but further Satan's kingdom? Woe, woe, woe to you leaders who stand in the way of my agenda, but call yourself mine, you brood of vipers. My divine judgment is being poured out on the leaders of my United States of America and my church. You leaders who want open borders, attack and pray against my anointed men and women, sow division and strife among the people. You hypocrites, repent. My righteous judgment is falling now. You who indulge in the corrupt things of this world for power and greed, you who call yourselves leaders, America's leaders, yes, even my church leaders, I will not only remove your authority and position, but some I will remove from the face of the earth. Repent before it's too late, for my righteous judgment is falling on those that have mocked, deceived, and led my people astray. For many are about to find out what the spirit of the fear of the Lord and who the one true God is. The spirit of God says, two will be taken and three will be shaken. For I will remove two from the evil crew of 32 and the other three shall be shaken to the core. The 32 years they have altogether served and empowered that entity called Baal and the covenant they have had holding up his house with the Illuminati and the New World Order shall come crumbling down. For when the first one is taken, it will be a sign that the New World Order shall die. When the second one is taken, it will be a sign that anyone calling himself mine but comes against my Israel, sympathizing with their enemies, will not be tolerated. The three that will be shaken will be a sign that no one is above the Most High God, not even those that hold the highest office in the land. These among many others that have tried to exalt themselves above me and my law will be exposed and imprisoned by me for the entire world to see. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of my throne. Yes, even the Supreme Court will be shaken. Do not fear, America, when you see these things manifesting, for these things must come to pass. I will clean up the darkness and it will usher in my light, for I have America in my hand. The Spirit of God says, Why are those that call themselves my people praying against my president? Why are you praying against my agenda for the United States of America? Repent. You pray against my agenda, therefore you are not for me, but against me. You pray against my agenda because you do not know your father's business. You pray against my agenda because you do not know me. Repent. Stop listening to Satan's frequency and tap into heaven's frequency. Then you will know the plans that I have for you. So in this prophecy, the Lord in the first paragraph, he's addressing these leaders that are leading the people astray, basically. They're standing in the way of his agenda. This is not Donald Trump's agenda. This is heaven's agenda that's being implemented on the earth through Donald Trump. But you have pastors, you have congregations who are stepping in the way of this. And the Lord's saying, woe to you. You don't know me. You don't know my plans that I have for, for the earth right now. His righteous judgment is falling now for those who are corrupt. It doesn't matter if you are in the political realm or the religious realm. Uh, God's going to deal with it. You're going to be exposed. Uh, some will be taken down, and he says even here, some will be removed from the face of the earth. That judgment's that severe. You know, we're seeing this in Congress, we're seeing it all over the United States. It's all the same agenda. It's just one hides it differently than the other. They're all working for the same common cause, and that's for the kingdom of darkness, for this new world order. Uh, you know, the rhinos, you know, uh, we see it every day in Congress. Uh, these guys come out and profess to be Republican and conservative, when in fact they are not. They've been working against us from day one. The second paragraph deals with the last five presidents. And it says, two will be taken and three will be shaken. For he will remove two from the evil crew of 32 and the other three shall be shaken to the core. Now, when the Lord started dealing with me on the, on the 32, he says, I want you to go back and research how long these guys have served total. And it was 32 years uh, the total between all of them. And that's where it came up for the evil crew of 32. It's all coming out. It's all going to be exposed. And these guys are going to get taken down and two will be removed, period, uh, from the face of the earth. We've already had one. Uh, 41 has been removed. You're going to have some that are going to go to prison for the rest of their life. Uh, you may have some suicide out, but you may have some executed. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. They know that their time is limited right now at this point. There's only one way that I know of that a president can lose the title of the president, and that is to be charged with treason. And I've gotten attacked for saying that. I'm just speaking what the Lord's saying. 
These people will be held accountable. The people are, they don't want to see justice or demand. It's going to come to a point they demand justice, and it's going to have to take place. So in the last paragraph, the third paragraph, the Lord is talking about uh, why are those that call themselves my people praying against my president? Entire churches out there that are praying against this president because they cannot see what God is doing on the earth right now. So God's calling these people out. He's saying, you guys need to repent because, again, when you're praying against this man, you are praying against God's anointed. He has anointed this man, period. Whether you like him, dislike him, agree with him or disagree with him, it makes no difference. Uh, he is a anointed and appointed by God. God's hand is upon him. The problem is with the church is they've become so passive, they've lost the warrior mentality. And then when a warrior, a true warrior, shows up on the scene, they get offended. And it's like, you don't understand what you're dealing with because if you truly understood the enemy that you're dealing with, you don't know your enemy. This man knows his enemy. He knows what he's dealing with, and it has to be dealt with on a different level, so, so to speak. And when a true warrior shows up, they take an offense to it. You're dealing with people who want to see you dead. They want to see me and you dead. This is why they're doing the depopulation, you know, whatever. Uh, you're talking about evil people who sacrifice kids who are into cannibalism. And so certain things have to be dealt with a certain way. If that means verbally putting a shock and awe into them and putting a fear of God at them, so be it. I don't have a problem with it. To me, the man's a true warrior. Trump will not be the only Trump in the White House, by the way. Uh, there will be more than one Trump in the White House. So uh, this, this is exciting to me. You know, it could be a Trump dynasty. So we'll see. This next prophecy is called All Roads Lead to Rome, and it was written January 25th, 2018. And it says, The Spirit of God says, The Pope and the Vatican. That's right, the Pope and the Vatican are not furthering my kingdom, but are aiding the kingdom of darkness. Many are saying that this is the last pope, but it's not for the reasons they think. This will be the last pope for what I, the Lord God, am about to do. I will expose this pope and all those under his command for all the corruption he and the Vatican have been involved in for centuries. The Spirit of God says there is a shaking and quaking coming to this pope and the Vatican, for I will split the Vatican and its leadership wide open for the entire world to see the inner workings of this ancient beast. This pope, the Vatican, and all its leadership will come crumbling down. I will pull back the veil to show how deep and dark the deception has been. You whisper in your inner chambers. We answer to no one. No one is above us. No one can hold us accountable. I, the Lord God, see it all, and the time has come when I will now hold you accountable for your darkness. This exposure will be of such magnitude that the people will say, what do we do now? Where do we go now? We want nothing to do with this. We have no religion now. Millions will walk away from their religion as this will affect other religions as well. The Spirit of God says, is my army ready? Are you ready to receive these people? Are you ready to receive my harvest that's going to take place from this exposure? Prepare yourselves for the tsunami of people that will be starving for me and have no place to turn. Prepare now, all roads lead to Rome. The Spirit of God says, there is a dig, an archeological find that is coming in an underground vault, which will be so cataclysmic that it will rock the Christian world. The answer lies between Jerusalem and Vatican City. The Lord's addressing the Pope and how wicked he is in the Vatican, the leadership, the hierarchy. It's not the people, it's, it's the hierarchy. And the Lord's addressing this, that he's gonna blow it wide open, he's gonna expose it. So uh, the Pope has come out and said that America uh, should not have a wall, that we should allow illegals in here, but yet the Vatican has got a wall completely around it for their protection. Uh, he's said all kinds of things, uh, supporting the New World Order, One World Religion, and this is what God said he's going to expose. He's going to, you know, where it's the pedophilia, whether it's the child sacrifice that's going on in the Vatican. Uh, all of these things you're seeing headlines every day coming out on the Vatican right now. So at some point, God's going to hold them accountable. The Lord's addressing his army on this. Because when this exposure comes out on the Vatican and the Pope, it's going to be so damaging. Nobody's going to want anything to do basically with the Catholic Church at that point. They're going to be leaving in droves. And honestly, this is going to parallel the exposures that's going on in these other denominations. It's not just the Catholics. I don't want people to, to focus in just on the Catholics, even though he's addressing the Pope and the Vatican on this, is that there's going to be a lot uh, of other denominations exposed. And I think there's going to be a mass, mass exodus from the church system, because this is all part of the system, that the army of God's got to be ready to handle. You know, where are you going to send these people? It's, it's almost like, where are we going to send the kids that we pull out of child trafficking, sex trafficking? Where are you going to send these kids to get deliverance? The church? The church system? These guys aren't doing deliverance. They don't even speak on deliverance. Uh, so we've got to be ready to handle that. This is where like the home congregations, this is where uh, you know, these different ministries outside of the system are going to have to be prepared to handle the masses because there's going to be millions across the globe that are going to exit.
get with a home-based congregation, get with the national, international prayer calls that we have. They're for free. All this stuff's for free, by the way. You know, uh, we, don't, we don't charge any money for this. The prophecy that really sticks out to me that Mark has written is the all roads lead to Rome. It hits home because there's been so much upside down in my local church and in my local neighborhood that it speaks volumes to me that this is partly the reason why. And people are getting hurt in the church and that is not okay. And it excites me that God sees it and he knows it and he's going to deal with it in his way. He's done with it. He cares about the widow and the orphan and all of us should be caring about that too. He cares about the little people and he cares about the babies and the children and he doesn't want this exploitation anymore. In this last paragraph, and this is the one that I held on to for probably eight months before because I just didn't quite know where it fit. It talks about the Spirit of God says there is a dig, an archeological find that is coming in an underground vault, which will be so cataclysmic that it will rock the Christian world. The answer lies between Jerusalem and Vatican City. This information that's coming, I believe, is going to be a, a usher in a worldwide deliverance, if you will. It's going to set people free from a lot of things that they believed that were incorrect. Um, I think it's going to be, you know, some people have asked me, could it be the Ark of the Covenant? Uh, it could be. It could be something in the Ark. We don't know. Something that they find with the Ark. I have no clue. I, I do s sense that it's going to be scrolls. It's going to be books, lost books, lost scrolls, lost writings maybe that were purposely kept from us from knowing the truth. And this truth is going to rock people. It's, it's just going to blow whatever they believed out of the water. And so I was told by someone uh, that the NSA has it all. Now, I don't know that to be true or not. The NSA is a national security agency. You can't say anything, you can't do anything on your phones now, computers, that they don't have it all, that it's not captured. They said that they had uh, all the esoteric knowledge that goes all the way back to the flood, that it's been analyzed, it's been studied, and uh, they have it all. And so uh, if that's the case, then that tells me that it's already been found. They've already got it. I don't know. The Lord told me, with this fine that it would be a mass deliverance. But he also told me, he says, whoever holds this information holds the keys to control the entire earth, pretty much. Now, if you think about this for a minute, if the black hats or the cabal have had this in their hands, this is why they've been able to control the earth. If we now have control of NSA, so if the white hats have this information, this is why we are now taking back the earth basically right now. This is why this, you're seeing this worldwide deliverance taking place. So it would make sense if they had it that uh, this is, that part is coming to pass, which is exciting to me. I work a little bit differently prophetically than most people do. And I've only sat down and penned out at one shot maybe two, maybe three prophecies, that's it. Because for the most part, the process for me takes days, weeks, and months sometimes. What happens is, is that the Lord will give me something and I'll write it down like a bullet point and I'll meditate on it. Maybe a day or two later, God starts filling the blanks, more bullet points, and I just keep going. The Holy Spirit will edit it for me. He'll move things around where it kind of flows a little bit. As I'm typing it out, He may move some things around. It's a process with me. And a lot of people, I think probably maybe 95% of the prophetic people out there, they'll grab a microphone and they start prophesying you know, at the top of their voice or right there. That's not me. Uh, for me, it's, it's a process. I think the Lord chose, chose Mark Taylor for right now because he was able, he was willing. He was not a voice that people were used to hearing. And God needed someone very much like he did Donald Trump. He needed to raise up someone that people would be able to listen to and be able to hear the right words from it. And Mark was the least of what they would be expecting. I don't call myself a prophet. Uh, I call myself a prophetic voice. Uh, others call me a prophet. There's nothing I can do about it. One of the things that I was really guarded about through this whole process, and again, this is like where character integrity comes in, uh, it's like, Lord, you know, I, I, he came to me in a dream one time. And I said, Lord, I said, look, I, said, I don't ever want to lead your people astray. And that was one of my biggest things in the prophetic. I just don't want to lead people astray. And he looked at me and said one word. He said, maturity. I was like, Lord, seriously, is there any more than there? I mean, come on. <laughs> you know. So it was, uh, it's, it's, it's about maturity. You know, the character, integrity, maturity process. Uh, it's not an easy process.
what you're seeing taking place right now is not a Democrat versus Republican thing. You can forget that. Those days are over. They've been over for many, many years. This is good versus evil on a level that has never been seen. America has a huge, huge destiny, and it will fulfill its destiny. You know, we get to be a part of that. What's there not to be excited about, honestly? You know, uh, you know, people want to stick on the doom and gloom all the time, and it's like, no, you know, yeah, there's, there's always going to be bad things that are, are going to happen. There's nothing we can do about it. We can't re prevent all of it, you know? But, I mean, there's a lot of good things happening right now. And there's going to be continuing to be a lot of good things happening. And we just need to focus on the good things right now, on the positive right now, of what God is doing on the earth. And Trump is, just, is a huge part of this. I knew there was something special about the guy, especially come April 20, 2011, the Lord said, you're hearing the voice of a president. Then I really knew at that point that this was, this was something, something huge. This was going to be earth shattering, if you will. And it has been. Everything that he's done, everything that God has accomplished through him, don't put God in a box because most people put Donald Trump in that box and you can't do it and you can't because he's going to come out of it every single time because why because God has ordained him anointed and appointed him to be the president of the United States the amazing thing was you know the other day he, he said something that uh, I'm paraphrasing here again that uh, he caught the swamp nobody else could have done that which tells me this is already over there's only a few more moves to make so to speak uh, and this thing's going to be done. We got the FISA fixing to drop, OIG fixing to drop. You have indictments right after that, and then you have the mass arrests. And there's going to be some chaos. There's going to be some civil unrest. You know, when you catch a, a gator, he does a death roll. And you're in, we're in the part of that death roll right now where they can still lash out, they can still bite. Uh, that's the most dangerous part of the fight. We're in the, the exposure phase. We've been in the exposure phase for a long time. We're going to continue to be in the exposure phase for many years to come. But it's the justice phase that's here now. I, I believe the justice phase is here now. When these guys start dropping the hammer, get the hammer dropped on them, justice-wise, it's not going to be pretty. I think that's when the huge Great Awakening is going to happen. You know, you may want to have a couple of weeks of food stashed, you know, in case he declares martial law. I'm not saying he will, uh, but you just, you just don't know. If you live in a big city where it could be a hot spot, you just need to be prepared is all. Uh, just know that there are assets in place to take care of all of this, to squash this stuff really quick. I do believe that. But people just aren't used to seeing a lot of this stuff uh, on this scale. Just don't walk in fear. That's the big thing. Encourage yourself with things. Encourage yourself with good news. Don't blast yourself with the doom and gloom. There'll be enough of it on the TV when this stuff breaks out. If you're feeling fearful, get on a prayer call. When you start to see that there's other people that are praying and interceding for our nation, you feel like there's a lot less fear. And we have a lot to offer when we get involved and get on the front line together. That way we're not we're not sitting there letting the fear overtake us. It's better to get in the fight and know what's going on than to sit and let the enemy play on your mind. People have to understand this is not just about America. This is globally. This is about the entire earth. I guess what I'm trying to get to people in other countries right now, focus on America and what happens in America because what happens in America is going to begin to spread worldwide. It's going to begin to go global, which is why we're seeing the protests. Watch the protests because wherever the protests are, that's where God's going to break out. He is breaking out, which is why the protests are happening. That's where you're seeing the move of God going on. Believe it or not, God's in that move because He wants the spiritually oppressed people of the earth freed so that His gospel can go forth. So I get emails all the time from people asking me, you know, hey, what about this country? What about that country? Keep an eye on America, but be praying for your own country. Be repenting for your own country. Shut those doors to the enemy because how America goes is how the rest of the world's going to end up going as well. People that have gone before us, have prayed for this day to come around, for justice to be served on the earth, and they never got to see it. And yet we are the ones that have the honor to be able to see justice served on the earth right now. We are the ones that get to take part in all of this. It may scare some people, but just know that God has a plan. It has to happen. It will come to pass, and uh, it's going to be glorious. I'd like to thank everyone for watching this documentary. I hope it encourages people and it brings you hope and the will to fight in these end times because the victory is ours and the Lord has already told us that. I would like to pray for everyone that has watched this now. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just lift up everyone under the sound of my voice right now, Lord. I bless each and every person that has watched this documentary. Father, we bless those that have put this documentary together. 
who are doing your will on this earth right now to further your agenda. Father, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that those would have their, uh, that are watching this right now would open their spiritual eyes and ears, Lord, to what it is that you are doing on this earth for your kingdom and to fight back the kingdom of darkness right now. Father, we just ask right now that you would just bless our president, bless his family. We ask the sevenfold spirit would come upon him and those who are helping to move heaven's agenda forward on this earth right now. Father, we cover him and his family in the blood of Jesus right now. We ask that you would release your protecting angels to surround him and his family. We decree and declare that they would stand shoulder to shoulder so that no evil could penetrate from any dimension. Father, we just ask right now, Lord, that you would close any portals and openings right now, that these entities that are coming in and wreaking havoc right now, we ask that you would close them right now and seal them shut in the blood of Jesus, Father. Father, we ask that you would bless the people right now and give them hope those that have watched this documentary right now, and give them the will to fight. We ask that you would restore their destiny that you have for them right now and move them forward in your kingdom, and that they will take ground for the kingdom of God and they will hold it at all costs. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.